here in Washington, the weather's starting to turn. So you know what that means. Pumpkin spice lattes are just around the corner. And so is cold and flu season. And this year we all know what's lurking out there. Now, I know you've been searching up ways to boost your immune system because we don't want to go into another lockdown. So in this video, I am going to give you many tips on how to strengthen your immune system before cold and flu season actually even starts. Did you notice that I said strengthen your immune system instead of boost your immune system? Did I do that on purpose? Yes, <laughs> yes I did. And this is because while there's many companies out there who would like to sell us a product that would boost our immune system, this idea is actually very elusive to scientists. There actually is not a magic potion that you can take that will help your immune system boost itself. Sorry. Um, but, but before you click away, I am here to tell you that there is a magic formula, words again, that you can follow if you want to strengthen your immune system. I mean, this is preseason, right? So we might as well try to strengthen ourselves so that we can be ready for when cold and flu season actually hits. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my page if you find my content helpful. It really helps my page grow and you know what really helps is also if you share this video with friends who you know might need some tips to strengthen their immune system. Okay, let's get into it now. Tip number one. Prioritize sleep. Now, I say prioritize, words again, because it is so hard to say that you need to just sleep more, right? We are all guilty of staying up late to complete that assignment or send out one more email or watch one more episode of this really great TV show. And before we know it, it's already midnight and we have to be up again at 6 a.m. As a doer, I am very guilty of adding just one more thing to my list. But sleep is vital to having a strong immune system. In fact, new research has shown that sleep and your immune system have a bi-directional relationship, which means one entity is going to affect the other entity. So for example, if you are fighting off an infection currently in your body, then you may lose sleep. Your sleep gets affected because of your body fighting that infection off. And then on the other side of things, if you're not sleeping a lot, circulating immune cell counts in your blood flow will also decrease. They've also shown that your immune cells, specific ones like the T cells um, and the B cells, they change in amounts of circulation based on your circadian rhythm. So they have higher levels on during certain hours of the day and lower levels during certain hours of the day. And this cycles with your sleep cycle. So getting a good night's rest at least eight hours a night consistently is going to help your immune systems stay strong and function the way they, they should be cycling during the right times of the day and night. Number two, exercise consistently. Now we all know exercise is good for you and there are hundreds of benefits for the body, probably more. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into those details with you right now in this video, but I will share with you this article. The, art, the authors of this article critically reviewed many related articles on exercise and the immune system. And they found that regular exercise can enhance immune responses to bacterial, fungal, and other antigens. This is really exciting because there were many myths back in the day that said if you exercise too much 
and your body is currently fighting something off, this can actually lower your immune response. But in this article, they have debunked that myth, which is really cool, and actually have shown that in fact, your immune system might actually be boosted with regular exercise. Number three, decrease stress. Now, this step is more for the recovery. If something does happen and you do get sick, under times of extreme stress, whether that's um, physical stress, psychological stress, your body releases adrenaline. And when adrenaline is released, you get a bit of an inflammation response to the infection, to whatever, so that your body is able to handle that new threat. And after adrenaline spikes, Cortisol actually hits after. And now remember, cortisol is your stress hormone. And what cortisol does is it mobilizes your glucose. So it gives your body um, the energy it needs to run away from the tiger or handle whatever mentally stressing task just happened to you. The other function of cortisol is it actually decreases the inflammatory response that adrenaline had. So it helps your body decrease all of that inflammation. This is key because when a foreign invader attacks our body, we get that little adrenaline spike, inflammation happens so that it can bring all of your immune cells to that area and take care of the problem. But the problem with an inflammatory response is that it causes a chain reaction. When something gets inflamed, it leads to another signal that's sent out and causes more and more inflammation to happen. So cortisol is a very important hormone because it is super potent anti-inflammatory. Now, it's been shown that chronic stress can inhibit cortisol which means there's nothing to combat that hyperinflammation. So even though our bodies are done fighting off this foreign invader, it doesn't have anything to regulate that inflammatory response. So this response will lead to another response and another response. And before you know it, it becomes a huge systemic inflammatory problem instead of just this local issue. So step up your self-care, meditate, journal, Go get adjusted by your chiropractor. Make sure things are all aligned on the inside. Get a massage and do whatever it takes to help you decrease your stress levels. Number four, increase your vitamin D intake. Now, I mentioned in another video that every single immune cell in your body it has a vitamin D receptor and every single immune cell type is also capable of synthesizing vitamin D by itself. So it's safe to say that vitamin D is a very important vitamin for your immune cells and the function of their immune system, of your immune system. Now, these specific reactions are very sciencey and going into detail would not be fun for this video. <laughs> but many studies have shown that lower levels of vitamin D are associated with increased infection rates. So there might be some sort of correlation there, right? In fact, there has been a study on 800 military recruits that found that the ones with lower serum vitamin D levels lost more days of active duty due to upper respiratory infections than the ones with higher vitamin D levels. So increase your vitamin D supplementation or make sure you're getting at least 4,000 IUD a day. That is your normal recommended daily amount. And if you're looking to boost your vitamin D intake, it is safe to take up to 10,000 IUD for eight weeks at a time. Even Dr. Fauci boosted his vitamin D intake during last year's surge. Of course, talk to your doctor first before, if you're unsure about boosting your vitamin D supplementation, if you're unsure if this will have a reaction with any sort of other things that you are taking, I am not your doctor and I don't know what is going on with your specific medical condition. 
this video is for informational purposes only and make sure you read the disclaimer below as well. I hope you feel more equipped for this year's cold and flu season. It's gonna be a doozy. Now I made a quick summary slide here of all the things we went over today. And we talked about prioritizing sleep, exercising consistently, decreasing stress, and increasing our vitamin D intake. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this year you'll be able to train hard for preseason so you'll be strong and ready for this year's cold and flu season.